So it's almost Christmas, which is what made me think of this video, because I get a lot of questions about what I might want for Christmas, but also people who want to get stuff for people they know. Most of these things will work just as well for a crocheter as it will for a knitter, so I just want to put that out there. You might think that the perfect present for someone who knits is yarn, because we love yarn, right? The problem is that because we love yarn, most of us already have a lot of yarn, but also most of us are kind of picky about yarn, and we know what we like when it comes to color, fiber content, uh, you know, the thickness, all that stuff. So unless you have like a very specific wish list from your person, I actually wouldn't suggest giving them yarn. Uh, you might, if you're the type, give them a gift certificate to a yarn store that they like. If you know that they like, you know, a big box craft store, that's fine, but most people have a favorite local yarn store. You could offer to take them to that store and buy them yarn within a certain budget. Don't tell them that their present is that they get to make you something. Don't give them yarn with the expectation that you will get something back, unless that's a deal you already have. Something that most knitters have a lot of but could still use more of, project bags. So some knitters will only work on one project at a time, so they might only need one or two project bags of different sizes. A lot of people have a lot of projects going on, or they might like different kind of bags for different projects or for travel. There are tons of different models. You can find them on Etsy. You can just like have different size totes or zipper bags or whatever. There are super fancy project bags that have room for all the needles and notions, maybe room for a pattern, all that stuff. But I think generally no knitter will be disappointed if you give them bags for projects. Another thing that's made to corral projects is a yarn bowl. Now uh, this one, just coincidentally, I make. You can get them at my website, I'm linking them below. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you can use any kind of bowl really. You can, you know, give them a big nice wooden bowl, you can find, you know, vintage stuff. Yarn bowls in particular are made so that you can put your ball in here, the yarn runs through these cutouts and the ball doesn't go flying everywhere. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. Yarn bowl. The next thing is a gleaner. Uh, this maybe looks like some sort of skincare or torture device. Uh, basically it's to get pills off your knits. It also has, ooh, this is dusty, let's not look at that. Uh, just like a deep fuzzer, fluffer, if you have dust or cat hair or stuff on your clothes. The thing that I like about the gleaner, as opposed to those like uh, depilling, defuzzing machines or even a regular razor, is that the gleaner comes with three different um, heads or attachments that you can just switch out so that depending on the fiber or the thickness, the quality of the material, you can adjust for that and then just get all the pills off. And actually, if you're a knitter, you could give this to someone that you like to give things to to help them take care of their knits. Uh, next up is this, um, yeah, don't, don't do this, uh, keep them more organized, but these are basically just your regular plastic crafting wires. The brand of these uh, I got off a British website, they're called Scooby-Doo, but it's spelled all weird. So a friend told me about these and they're great because you can keep stitches on them. So you can put a whole sleeve on them while you're uh, knitting the rest of the body. You can put all of your stitches on it to be able to try stuff on sort of more flexibly. And the great thing is that because uh, they're hollow, you can stick the tip of your needle in there and then just sort of pull it along, which makes it way easier to transfer stitches both onto it and off of it, rather than like yeah, pretty much any other method that I've tried. So um, I'm gonna have to organize this tangle of things uh, someday. The next sort of topic in general is stuff for blocking. So there are some things that you might wanna check if your knitter has, like blocking wires, which are really good but you can almost always buy more like T-pins or blocking pins, maybe whatever wool wash they like. I would make sure that you don't get either scented in general or a scent that they don't like. But one thing that I really appreciate that I got for Christmas last year are these uh, rainbow knit blockers from Knit Pro um, because they're a bunch of pins on one thing. I know some people don't like these. I really appreciate them for like the bottoms of smaller things like baby cardigans or certain portions of blocking shawls because it just makes it easier to get several pins in a straight line without having to do it by hand. So I don't always use them but when I do I really appreciate them. One thing that's maybe kind of obvious 
but a really good present for a knitter, if you ask, are knitting books. There's tons of technique books, there are tons of pattern books that even though there's tons of resources online can still be really nice to have. One gift idea that might be a little unexpected if you're not a knitter is nice hand creams and hand lotions because your hands get really dry in general maybe this time of year or all times of year and working with yarn can make them even drier and it's a really horrible feeling when the yarn catches on dry parts of your hands. So my last suggestion is a book of vouchers that will help your knitter get stuff done. So maybe I will do X chore so that you can knit instead, or I will rub your shoulders and your hands when they hurt, uh, or I will take a hundred project pictures of you in your finished or very much not finished project without complaining, or I will take you to an alpaca farm. Depends on your level of ambition and budget, but I'm pretty sure it will be very appreciated. So those are a couple of suggestions for things to give to the knitter or crocheter or other fiber artist in your life. If you have any more suggestions or if you think these are super super bad, let me know in the comments. Merry Christmas if that's your thing, otherwise have a good end of the year and a great 2020. I need to get back to finishing some Christmas presents because I got a little ambitious with my knitting ideas.